will uh, I would I would like to read from Luke as we stay as we stand from Luke chapter 10 verse 38 Yeah we can stand up As Jesus and his disciples were on their way he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one, Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. You can be seated. I will try to be shorter, but wanted to underline a few principles, because when we receive Jesus Christ in our heart, when we are born again, we shouldn't stop here. There was a guy on Instagram, he wrote me, Brother Christy, I was baptized, now I'm done. No, you are not done, you just started. You just started. Basically, it's not enough to be born. Any child who is born has to eat, has to learn to walk, has to breath, has to grow. If you give him toys instead of food, he will, he will die. Of course, and unfortunately, we have many dead Christians in our churches. Similarly, there are a few things in Christian life which need your attention, and you have to focus on those. Otherwise, you will die spiritually. And every day, you will have to choose daily between priorities versus urgencies. A lot of teenagers I've met told me, I don't have enough time. Well, let me tell you, you have time for what you choose to have time for. Or you have time for the things you love. Therefore, you have to choose the important things over urgent things. And let me give you two examples. Getting your car engine repaired is urgent. Changing the oil so it doesn't need to be repaired is important. Getting help when you are sick is urgent, but taking care of yourself so you don't get sick is important. And if you do important, you won't have as many things that are urgent. I just read that text about Martha, who felt the pressure of being the host of Jesus and his disciples. My wife told me one day, God forbid you <laughs> to come with some guys to my home without noticing me before that. <laughs> yeah? It was a warning. And you know, if your wife has such warnings, you should listen to them. Yeah? And uh, basically, in, that, in those times, there, were, there was no phone, no email. Suddenly, Martha and Mary saw 13 persons in front of their house. And of course, the pressure was enormous. She had to prepare some food for the guests to wash the dishes, to prepare the table, and so on. Everything was urgent. Mary knew that it's much more important to listen to Jesus' words rather than to prepare the meals in that day. She chose important verses, so over urgent. It's very challenging for us to live with the hurt of Mary in the world of Martha. And uh, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And in Luke, it says, verse 40, but Martha was distracted but by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, tell her to help me. 
Let me tell you that the best leaders don't do more. They do more of what matters most. And I know, I know that we live in a busy world, we have a lot of distractions. And uh, we have a lot of notifications from WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Facebook. And even if you want to read your Bible, you cannot because you are distracted by so many things. But let me be honest with you, you don't have to reply to every message. You don't have to check every like you receive, and you don't have to read every new posting on social media. It might be appear urgent, but it's not important. Therefore, let's see four important things you need to focus on after you are born again, if you want to fully live a spiritual life. The first thing, it's prayer. It's prayer. And Daniel 6, verse 10 says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Brothers and sisters, Daniel had a lot of reasons to ignore praying. He had a lot of meetings daily. He had a lot of problems to solve. He had a lot of responsibilities. And I'm pretty sure that nobody from here is busier than Daniel's life. And Daniel was, right? But he still chose important versus urgent. He knew that praying is important. I really recommend you to, to, to read... Leonard Ravenhill's book, This Man of God, said, No man is greater than his prayer life. Prayer doesn't condition God. Prayer conditions us. Prayer does not win God to our view. It reveals God's view to us. In the county I live in Hunedoara, there was a huge accident a few years ago. Basically, the fa one father gave to his 18-year-old child a, new, a brand new car. And uh, in that accident, the boy was thrown out of the car through the windshield, and he was seriously injured in the neck, and the blood was flowing abundantly. During his last seconds from his life, he looked up at his father and said, Daddy, Say a prayer with me. And the father said, I don't know how to pray. That father knew how to build a house, how to buy a car, how to earn money, but he didn't know how to pray. The poor kid died without having the chance to hear one prayer from his father. I urgently ask you to choose prayer over anything else, but don't wait for car accidents to learn how to pray. The Scottish reformer, John Knox, was often in such an agony for the people of his country that he couldn't sleep. He passionately prayed, O oh Lord, give me Scotland or I die. Knox was such a man of prayer that bloody Queen Mary said that she feared his prayers more than all the armies of Europe. Do you want to have a great marriage? Pray. My wife told me a few years ago I started praying for my future husband when I was 10 years old. I spent three years in Timisoara when I was at the university fasting and praying every Tuesday for my future wife. Let me tell you that today we have a great family. Why? Not because we are very good, but because our God is good and he's listening to the prayers we do. The second thing, if you want to have a spiritual life, an abundant spiritual life, is Bible reading. I know that some of you might say, Brother Christy, 
you came from Romania to tell us about the importance of the Bible study. This is a basic thing. Well, let me tell you that we as Romanians, we don't have problems with complex things. We have problems with basic things. And one of these is Bible reading. 85% of our church members are not reading their Bible every day. This, should be, this is pretty scary. Right? Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. As you, as you know, Joshua was a true man of God. He was a great leader. His family served God. Do you know his secret? The book of the law. The book of the law. A lot of teenagers are, I met are said that God doesn't speak to them while they have their Bible closed. Do you want God to speak to you? Open your Bible. It's the most important prophecy I read in my life. Just open the Bible. I was visiting California a few years ago and I met some uh, one friend and uh, taking the dinner with him we were discussing all sorts of things and I, I, I asked him about his mother and he told me that she's 73 years old and I asked him okay what are the guys who retire doing in the US say in Romania we do all, all sorts of things after we retire we try to uh, earn even more money before we, before we did, right? And uh, he told me that his mother read the Bible 137 times already. I changed the subject immediately. I was so angry to myself that me as a pastor, I didn't read the Bible as many times as others. 137 times. Jesus fought with the devil using the scripture. What about you? AK-47? Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Devil will do everything, brothers and sisters, to you, to depart you from the scripture. He will give you all sorts of urgencies in order to keep you away from the word of God. Bible reading is your meal for your soul. Don't, hear, don't let your soul starving to death. Feed it. I was visiting one of our widows from our church together with our uh, pastor Cornell and uh, because I'm working as a software engineer uh, I usually when I enter someone's house I usually look for, look for a tablet, for a laptop, for an iPhone because I'm really interested in tech stuff. And I was looking in her living room and there was no tablet, no, no smartphone. There was only that old style phones with buttons. And I asked her, uh, you are a widow for 15 years already. What are you doing every day? Are you... Are you don't getting bored to be alone all day? And she said, not a word. I have a TV in my room with 66 special channels. And I was thinking, okay, so my guys are looking at Netflix every day when they are widows. Okay, I'm a good pastor then. I'm a really good pastor. But she continued and said, I've seen all these 66 channels this year and now I'm seeing them a second time. I'm on the Ezekiel channel 
right now. And I said, praise God. Such a blessed widow. She spent her time, hours per day, reading the Bible. The third important thing is fasting. It's fasting. Mark chapter 9, 28, it says, And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come all out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Brothers and sisters, teenagers, youth, you cannot fight with demons using your intelligence, your skills, your money, your body. Demons are running away only when somebody is getting closer to God through fasting and prayer. And from time to time, you need to take some time to fast, to stop concentrating on your physical needs and start concentrating on your inner spiritual needs. Why? Because fasting humiliates our tendency to rely on the natural world and forces us to live from the spiritual world. As a result, God's voice becomes clearer. Fasting is a, way to, a great way to gain clarity for an important decision. Hear me loudly. Refraining from eating or drinking for a period of time is an act of worship that is good, for your soul. In fact, fasting is less about what we are giving up and much more about what we are making room for. When you fast, we exchange what we need to survive for what we need to live, meaning more of God. I will not read again these verses from Isaiah 58, but please read, read them at home. But what I really, really learn from these verses is that the least important thing when you fast is the fact that you don't eat. <laughs> the, le the last important thing is the fact that you don't eat. There are much more important things you have to do when you fast. Isaiah basically tells us, make someone's day better when you fast. You do not eat in that day. Go feed someone. You don't go shopping for yourself. Go shopping for others. Amen. You don't take care of your needs. Then give your food to the poor. Buy some clothes for somebody in need. And so on. Make your day worse while making someone's day better. Amen. This is real fasting. And... We also need fellowship, brothers and sisters. Soccer players spend time with soccer players. Chess players are doing training with other chess players. If soccer players are spending time with the ones who hate soccer, they will fail miserably, right? Hebrews chapter 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day approaching should find us getting closer and closer and being together, preparing from the rapture for the rapture. Amen. And my advice for everybody here is spend more time with the guys who love God and less time with others. With others. Spend more time Teenagers, youth, with the guys who like to pray, who read their Bible, who show respect to their parents, who serve Jesus whenever they have some free time by visiting poor, helping orphans, and so on, and so on. Let me, let me go to the end of the sermon by reading something awesome about Martha. Something awesome. Because there was a time when Martha chose what was important. John 11, verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Mary was like, Martha, it's your turn now. 
it's your turn. But it's your turn through a tragedy which came in our family. Because we have members in our family who don't pay attention to the word of God until there is a tragedy, until there is an accident, until they are getting sick and so on. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know, please underline, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Brothers and sisters, God doesn't want us only to know. God wants us to be transformed, to be renewed, to obey him. Not only know the Bible, not only know what, was, what the pastor preached today. He wants a new life. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And now Jesus is looking to Martha and he's saying, do you believe this? And she was like, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God into the world. Teenagers, youth, brothers and sisters, do you notice something here? The meeting with God, our meeting with God should be personal. Encountering Jesus should be personal. It's not, about, it's not only like my parents are Pentecostals, <laughs> my parents are Pocahits. You should be also transformed and renewed by God's word. Let me end saying that do not wait for a tragedy to choose important over urgent. I was in an airport a, f a few months ago and one guy came to me and told me, Brother Christy, I'm listening to your sermons for years, but I never repented. And I was like, okay, what are you waiting for? And he was like, I'm going to Bucharest. My brother, who is a real Christian, is in coma. He's in hospital. He's very sick. He has no chance to survive. And I think that God is speaking me through this tragedy. He told me many times in the last days, I was questioning myself, I was testifying myself. If I were to be there on the hospital bed, where I would go? Brother Christy, I was listening to your sermons, but I think that the, come, that the time to repent has already come. And I want to, I want to ask Jesus for forgiveness. I want to stop for a lot of work I'm doing, a lot of pleasures, a lot of addictions, and just meet God and just ask him to forgive my sins. About 100 years, 150 years ago, there was a great revival in Wales. And I will end with this testimony and we will sing with Manu. As a result of this, many missionaries came to North East India to spread the gospel. There was a region known as Assam who was comprised of hundreds of tribes who were primitive and aggressive headhunters. Into these hostile and aggressive communities came a group of missionaries from the American Baptist missions spreading the message of love, peace and hope in Jesus Christ. Of course, they were not welcome there. One missionary succeeded in converting a man, his wife, and two children. This man's fate proved contagious and many villagers began to accept Christ. Angry? The village chief summoned all the villagers. He then called the family who had first converted to renounce their faith in public 
or face execution. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the father, the man, the head of the family said these words, I have decided to follow Jesus. Enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered his archers to arrow down the two children. As both boys lay twitching on the floor, the chief asked again, Will you deny your faith? You have, you have lost both your children. You will lose your wife too. But the man replied, Though none joins me, still I will follow. The chief wolf was beside himself with fury and ordered his wife to be arrowed down. In a moment she joined her two children in death. Now he asked for the last time, I will give you one more opportunity to deny your faith and leave. In the face of that, the man said the final memorable lines. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. He was shot dead like the rest of his family, but with their deaths, a miracle took place. The chief who had ordered the killings was moved by the fate of the man. He wondered why should this man, his wife and two children die for a man who lived in a faraway land on another continent some 2000 years ago. There must be some remarkable power behind the family's fate and I too want to test, to taste that fate. In a spontaneous confession of fate, he declared, I too belong to Jesus Christ. When the crowd heard this from the mouth of, the, of their chief, the whole village accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. What did man do? This man chose important over urgent. Being alive for him was urgent. Following Jesus was important. What have you decided to do today? I have decided to follow Jesus. And because I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to pray daily. I have decided to fast often. I have decided to read the Bible. I have decided to be here Thursday, Monday, if there are youth here, Sunday, even in the evening, not only in the morning. Amen. Amen. Why? Because for me, there are important things and urgencies, and I chose important things over urgencies.